Hey there, this is a quick um, overview of the VCV rack modules that I've been building for oscilloscope music. VCV rack is this great uh, Euro rack modular synthesizer emulator that's free, and you can just copy that from the description. Um, I built these free modules that you can also find online to download for Windows, and I'm going to put up a Linux build too. Um, we can start with the simplest one, which is this circle VCO voltage controlled oscillator that has um, free waveform outputs and the voltage proactive um, control input. So it's basically just an oscillator that has um, these sine, cosine and um, sawtooth ramp outputs that are all synchronized in phase all the time. So you can use that um, to draw circles pretty much. So if we add a scope and we just take the sine and cosine output then you can see that they are shifted by 90 degrees in the phase and if we turn it into the XY mode then you can see the circle. Now in VCV rack you can see they are both um, 10 volt peak to peak so they should be um, actually round and VCV rack the scope has some weird scales so you need to fix that manually. And of course you can listen to that too by putting them on the left and right channel of this um, core audio interface. Let's take it back. Mm. And in addition to these two signals, um, there's also this phase ramp. And you can see it goes from 0 to 5 volts um, once every rotation around around a circle if you add these two back. So one of the simplest things we can do is we can take the phase ramp and we can take a, a VCA to change the amplitude of these two sinusoid waves. Um, depending on the phase ramp. So if we do that for both channels, we will put the phase ramp as the volume control here on the linear channel and we will take these two um, sinusoid waveforms and pump them through the VCA and then into the scope. Now we have something really tiny to crank up the level and maybe change the scales a bit. But basically we end up with a sort of spiral because it's going to start very low. Okay, I had a reverse now, I guess. So it's spinning the other way, but usually I have it like this. Yeah, so you have those two waveforms going around and the phase starts at zero volts. So the volume is going to be all the way low when it starts. And then the volume ramps up until it finishes the end of the circle and then it just crashes back down. And now we can um, take those two outputs back on the sound too, so you can hear that. And maybe bring down the level so it's a bit easier on the ears. Yeah. And the circle VCO also has a pitch knob. And this just changes the speed of how often per second these things happen. But that's not really visible on the oscilloscope, but it uh, changes, of course, the sound a lot. And this voltage per octave input is so that the whole thing can be play like a normal oscillator from a sequencer. So if I put like a random sequence here, I can take that. Okay, that's way too high. So you can imagine how you could use this in a more musical context. Okay, so that's basically all the circle VCO can do. It's pretty boring in itself. Um, but this, like the other two modules are made to kind of work with this so far. So we have the... Let's start with the comparator, I guess, yeah. So the comparator... Uh, to myself for a moment. The comparator basically compares this input voltage um, against some range on, on the circle. So if we nope, scale this down again, um, basically we're going to take the phase ramp so that in every moment we're comparing the current position on the circle to some offset. And then we're going to take this as the multiplication for both channels. So if we have it like this, we're just going to have the circle. And so this is basically what happens if the input is inside the threshold and this is what happens if it's outside the threshold. 
So if I bring this down right now, you can see these LEDs on all the time. So this controls the output right now. But if we bring up this part, um, then we can kind of split the circle in two parts and we can move that part around using this offset. And we can change the size of that part using the range control. Now you can see these LEDs blinking like crazy because on every rotation of that circle, which is a couple hundred to thousand times a second, you can, uh, like these are going to change back and forth once or twice. So basically this allows to create, I don't know, some, some kind of weird paddle shape like this. Um, and these two parameters you can see have an input jack. So here we can add some modulation. So I'm going to add um, an LFO. And we can take a sawtooth wave, for example, into the offset, and then the thing is going to spin. And if we add a second LFO, we can take a sine wave into the range. And that wave is going to be, I guess, too big for this modulation range, so I'm going to add an antenna verger where I can scale the signal down. And now these knobs are becoming base offsets basically. So if this can change a bit how 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 much this should change that. And now we can start listening to it again. Oh yeah, okay, they added this thing in the last version, it's going to be useful. Okay, it's just going to make it easier for me to mute this when it becomes annoying. So that's basically all about the comparator. You can change these two output values. Uh, I'm thinking I might change this instead of that there's two knobs, there could be two jacks and one of them is a gate through to the output so that way you can make way more interesting stuff by using this it's kind of more of a key gate instead of like a fixed voltage generator for both sides or you could of course use like an external gate to do that anyway so moving on like the third module is the modulo and this is just a modulo calculator so if you have an input signal that exceeds some voltage, 5 volts, then it's going to wrap around and start back from zero. So the easiest way to see that is to take again the phase ramp as the input, remove that, and we can take the wrapped output as the modulation, as the volume modulation from the VCA. And now on the way down we come back to the spiral we had before. Back on. But now as I turn this internal gain up, there's the moment here where the where the staircase uh, where the where the sawtooth waveform hits five volts and then gets reset back to zero and that's what you see here. Like right now this waveform is hitting ten volts and being clipped down to zero and starts again, goes up to five, and we have two of those leaves, and as you turn up there's more and more of those until you have something like this. And then as you go up too high, it starts to kind of spaz out and does interesting patterns. But this is mostly due to artifacts from the sample rate and then how we see rec handles these things. Yeah, but so you can, if you get it just right, you get like a perfect shape. And then this shape can be kind of uh, rotated if we add like a unity gain mixer so here we can just add signals together if we take the phase ramp and to that we add back a sawtooth LFO and we take the summed output and we get a spinning flowering shape
far if we take like a sine wave, it's going to spin back and forth. And depending on how we use these, these signals, you can have some other interesting shapes that randomly come up. If we disconnect this, we need to zoom way out, but we have some of this. Okay, weird spiky waveform, because now on the y-axis it's just going up and down like normal, but left and right is going to still do that multiple in and out spikes. And of course the same works like the opposite way. Or we can go ahead and have two of those with different values. Ah, first we have to fix the scale again. Now it gets some really weird tangled up shapes. And basically the last feature is this staircase output of the modulus, which is pretty simple. It's just that um, if I take these off for a second, if we have this um, simple phase ramp here, bring those down, and we put them, we put that also into the modulus, and I take the staircase, and the staircase, so this is kind of a byproduct of um, of generating this wrap thing, but it's quite useful. You can see it's kind of a stepped, rounded off version of that. It's like more square, and when you go lower, you have less steps. Right now, you have basically zero steps, and it just stays zero. And then you have one step, and it turns out to two, three, four, and so on, and just goes on. So you have as many steps on this waveform as there are wrapped copies on the wrapped output. As you can see, like this. It's a bit hard to see because it's so small. Yeah, so every time that this makes like a step, the other one goes back down and does the same thing. Yeah, I guess that's it for now.